Hello, welcome to today's video. We'll be looking at leak code problem number 1589, the maximum sum obtained of any permutation. The problem says that we have an array of integers and an array of requests, and the ith request gives us the starting position and the ending position of that request. What that means is we, we go to the start index that we're given, and we add up every number all the way to the ending index. And we're told that the start and end indexes are zero indexed. It doesn't seem like too hard of a problem so far, but what makes it tricky is that we're given the freedom to shuffle the nums array, and we want to return the maximum total sum of all the requests among all permutations of nums. And because this answer might be large, we want to return it mod 10 to the 9th plus 7. I've gone ahead and written down the first example. Our nums array is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 as the values, and I've gone ahead and written down the indices below. The requests we were given were 0, 1, and 1, 3, and I, I visualize these a little bit in purple. It means from indices 0 to 1, we want to include those, and also from 1 to 3, we want to include those as well. Now, if we keep track of the count of how many times each index appears in our requests, index 0 appears once, index 1 appears twice, index 2 appears once, index 3 appears once, and index 4 doesn't appear at all. What that means is, if we left the nums array as is, the number 2 would be included in our result twice, the number 1 would be included in the result once, the number 3 would be included once, and the number 4 would also be included once. But that doesn't give us the maximum value. We want the maximum value achievable. What we want to end up doing is taking the biggest value in the nums array and putting it in the position that appears the most. What that would look like after we shuffle, so we'll shuffle the array a little bit. We know index one appears the most number of times in the requests, so the biggest number should go there. That was five. I have a bunch of ones here, but it doesn't really matter which one we choose. If I choose the index zero, what's the, what's the next biggest number? It's four. The next biggest number is three, and then two, and then one. If I were to multiply everything together, I would get four plus 10 plus three plus two for a total of 19 once I add that up. And that's what this answer ends up being. Now notice, I didn't have to do 4, 5, 3, 2. I could have done 4, 5, 2, 3, 1, and that would have given me the same answer. And that's why this question isn't asking for the specific permutation. It's just asking for a permutation that gives the largest value like this. The crux of this problem really comes down to figuring out an efficient way to keep track of how many times each index appears in the requests. And one way you could do it and this is an inefficient way, and I'll say why in a second, is you could look at one request at a time and process it. So for example, in this first request from 0 to 4, it means index 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 all appear, which means I can keep track of the count on, on those values. And then I'll look at my next request, and it's 0, 2, which means 0, 1, and 2 all get an additional count. And then my final request is 1, 3. So I'll go 1, 2, 3 like this. And that's processed. But that's actually not a very good way to handle these requests because if you have m requests and n nums, this operation could be an m times n operation. And that's very, very slow. There's a better way we can figure out how many times each index appears in the array by using something called the prefix sum. And with the prefix sum, what we'll do is we'll keep track of the first index that a request appears at, and then the first index which that request is no longer valid, which means for the request number one from 0, 4, we have one starting at index 0, and the first index no longer, no longer counted, it would actually be index 5. So I'm going to put like an out of bounds here for index 5. And the second request from 0 to 2, we have two requests starting at index 0 and the first index which this request is no longer valid is 3 so I'm going to put minus 1 here 
And finally, from 1, 3, our last one here, I have one request starting at index 1, and then the first index at in which this request is no longer valid is index 4. I'll put a minus 1 here. And I was actually going to put a minus 1 outside here, too. Now, I, with the prefix sum, what we want to do is we want to add these all together in such a way that each index is the sum of itself with the previous value. What that looks like is this. 2 plus 0 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. How we can interpret this as when we're at index 1, we know that there's one request that starts here. And if we look previously, there were, we're already handling two requests on top of that for a total of three. When we're at index 2, we have no requests starting here, but we we're in the process of handling three, which means there's three total at index 2. When we get to index 3, there's one request less that we're handling, but we're in the process of handling three, which means there are now two total requests we're handling. Likewise, when we get to index 4, there's one less request we're handling, but we're in the process of handling two, which means at index 4, we're only processing one request. Finally, outside the array, it doesn't really matter, but if you look at these numbers, these 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, they match these values up here, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1. And the time it takes to do this is way faster. If we have m requests, this is an O of m operation. It's much, much faster to handle the request this way. The next step then is to sort everything. If I were to sort the numbers from smallest to largest, I would get 1, 1, 2, 4, 6. And if I were to sort the count, the prefix sum from smallest to largest, I would get 1, I'm going to use a different color here. I would get 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. And from here, all I need to do is multiply everything together and keep track of the sum. I would get 1, I'm going to change colors again. I would get 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 12 plus 18 here for a total of, let's see, 12 plus 18 is 30. 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, for a total of 37 as my answer. Let's see how this can look in the code. The first thing I'd like to do is make my mod variable. Now, the problem said that it has to be 10 to the 9th plus 7, like this. I'm going to just make this a static variable because it belongs to the class. It's not going to change per instance. Okay. I'm going to create a variable to keep track of the sum and I'm going to make it a long variable just because I don't want to worry about overflow and this is just a trick that you can use to make it so you don't have to worry about overflow quite as much. I'm going to grab n for nums.length and we're going to create our counts array, which keeps track of how many times each index appears in the array. Make n of them. I'll process each request now using our prefix sum technique. For every request in the request, we'll, we'll say we're going to start at request at index 0, and we're going to end at whatever the request at index 1 was. But I'm going to add 1 to it, and that's because we actually want to include request at index 1 inside of our sum. The first index that this request doesn't apply to is 1 greater than it. What I'll do is increment counts at the start by 1, and I'm going to do a quick check here. If the end is less than n, I will decrement here by one. And that's in case my request goes out of bounds like we saw in the example. I don't want to destroy my array here. 
Now to apply the prefix sum, we'll create a variable to start from one and we'll go all the way to n by one like this. And the request, or sorry, the, the count at that index is just gonna be whatever it was plus one minus that, plus the index one before that. Next, we're gonna sort the nums and we'll sort our counts too. Finally, here's the fun part. We're just gonna go through and we're gonna multiply the nums at index i times the count at index i and add that to our sum. I'm gonna convert those to longs, just create a val and whatever nums at index i was, and we'll cast this to a long as well. counts at index i like this, and then our sum can go up by that value. Once we're finished with that, all we need to do is remember to return as an int whatever our sum was, but modding by the appropriate value here. Let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. Forgot my semicolon in the first line of code I wrote, that's okay. Okay, in the example, we get the expected outcome. Let's submit and see if we get it right. Yes, we, we get the answer right here. Let's look at the runtime complexity real quick. Uh, if I have n as my nums.length, however many numbers I have, then for the time, I have an O of n operation and then Counts and nums are both length n, and because I'm sorting them, they're n log n each. This is another n. The worst I've seen so far is n log n. Time is actually gonna be O of n log n. You might be wondering about this for loop with the requests, and there could be m requests, but n log n is gonna be a more significant factor than just m which means I'm going to just ignore that. If you wanted to be really specific, you could do n log n plus m, where m is the number of requests. And for the space complexity, I'm only creating an array of length n, so it's just going to be O of n. You could, if you wanted to, instead of sorting these values, is put them into a priority queue, but I don't like that as much because a priority queue is extra memory and it's going to be the same time complexity as just sorting the array. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions, please comment and I'll get back to you. Or if you have any video suggestions, please let me know. Thank you.